Welcome to the Miked Up Podcast. We're having uh, we're we're so far in that we've got so many episodes. I have no idea what episode we're in. Twenty, episode twenty, something like that. Wow, how about that? Look at you. And I've been gone for a few weeks, so you guys have like handled it while I was gone. Like you handled the messages in the series, kinda. Kind of, yeah. Well, we're glad uh, you guys have joined. If you like it, hey, like the podcast, share it, whatever. We just want to continue our conversation from the series we've been in. So we've had a few minutes discussion before we started. Like, what are we going to talk about? I don't know. So now you guys are just wondering what question I'm going to ask because it's usually different than whatever we talked about, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, always been in conversations like, oh, what should we talk about? And then you're like, don't worry about it. It'll be, it'll be good. And then you start the podcast looking and ask a question we didn't know was coming. That's right. But it, doesn't that make it fun? It's easy for you to not worry about it. That's true because, you know, it's always interesting to find out what's on your mind. Mm-hmm. Like unprepared, unscripted, so to speak, right? I think that's what people like about the podcast. It's unscripted. Well, Isn't that what you... Huh? I, I think I, I like the structure. No I'm so we're surprised. Going and, you know, but hey, I get it. It's the fun of being on a podcast. You get yeah. to be in the moment. So it's the third week on uh, really learning what it is to be a neighbor, right? It's really centered around the second greatest commandment, which I don't think there's ever a time that it's bad to lean in talking about what Jesus said, the second greatest commandment. And we were just having some conversation. Maybe it's not second. Maybe it's just one. So why don't, yeah. maybe we just start there, yeah. Colin, Pastor Colin, because you kind of brought brought up an interesting conversation you just had recently with somebody. Yeah. So um, you might recall last week um, in that podcast, I actually read from Matthew 22, the greatest commandment and Jesus's answer, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And it may even have said when I read it, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. So I was having a conversation with a friend uh, last week, had nothing to do with this, and somehow the conversation went there. And when we look in Luke uh 1025 the way that it's presented when jesus is asked about this he says teacher what shall i do to inherit eternal life so notice the conversation is around you know he frames it around eternal life and jesus says it is written um you shall love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul with all your strength with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself and so the way jesus responds this time it all flows as one piece and so the conversation Mm -hmm. we're having and i'm hoping it's the conversation that maybe you'll entertain and think about is to really love your neighbor as yourself requires that we love god that it's, mm-hmm. it's almost like that's, that's like a prerequisite or part of loving my neighbor well is that I love God. And then uh, it's interesting the way he finishes and he says, and he said to him, you have answered correctly, do this and you will live. So that loving God and loving our neighbor has to do with life and death. In other words, I'll say it another way, not loving God, not loving our neighbor produces death this is what produces life so that was it was an interesting conversation mm-hmm. very interesting conversation yeah i mean uh galatians really says the whole law is summed up in right yeah the fruit of the spirit right Lo- which all begins with love love yeah right? and right. actually i love the way you hold fruit of the spirit because it I, I don't know i think it's i, I don't want to say it's unique i think it's a interesting uh, way to reflect on because it's for example it's not the fruits of the spirit and nine things are listed starting with yeah, love yeah. but it's the fruit of the spirit so hmm that's kind of interesting that it's not pluralized so it starts with love and you talk about the other eight love joy peace patience as being characteristics of that love but i think if you look in first corinthians 13 when it says what love is and what love isn't you can almost correlate every one of those other eight things as qualities of love love. or what love is what love isn't right so it's just interesting i'm not saying i'm right but i think uh, i also find like jesus doesn't give us multiple things to focus on he likes to simplify things yeah right so if we think of the fruit of the spirit filled life as love and we can focus on that he says what's the greatest commandment love Love. the lord all your heart mind soul and strength love your neighbor yourself if we can focus on love it produces 
I think it produces a life of joy, produces a life of peace, right? Yeah. Patience flows out of love, uh, long suffering, yeah, kind, kindness, yeah. uh, all these things. Yeah. Against such there is no law. So I think it's interesting. All around, really, yeah. loving your neighbor. If you yeah. if you even look at like the political aisles on both sides, love your neighbor. We just had to go there, right? Isn't a disagreeable <laughs> like idea, right? Right? No one's like that's a really bad idea. We should not love our neighbor. Mm-hmm. Um, what's disagreeable is how, how we go about loving our neighbor, mm-hmm. and uh, if the priority is to love our neighbor apart from loving God. We're going to have flawed definitions of what it looks like to love our neighbor. So good. It's going to be based off my own brokenness or my own hurt or my own pain or the cultural's definition. Or if I have need, what somebody else should do to love me and what the government right. should make them do to love me. The or if I have money, what I shouldn't have to do and what right. they shouldn't force me to do. Right. And I think we have this this kind of idea in our culture where it's like love is like this um, Disney princess or like, you know, kind of like weird definition of love feel good right Mm -hmm. um which in some sense kind of leads to like some toxic empathy in our culture and things like that and if our focus is to love god then he's going to redefine our love for us and then we're going to be able to truly love our neighbor right yeah but it's going to come first and foremost from loving god first and foremost Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. and i love that he qualifies with all your heart Mm -hmm. yep my, like uh, I think different different places there. Uh, w- one gives heart, mind, soul, and strength. Others say heart, soul, and strength. I think this one says heart, soul, strength, mind. and mind. And mind, yeah. Four. Yeah. O- other places, it, there's just three qualif- yeah. yeah qualifications, which I think is an interesting conversation. The whole point with all your being, yeah, right? right? So then with I go to people. like, what areas of my heart need healing so I can actually love him with all my heart? Yeah. Because whatever area of brokenness is in my heart gets in the way of the purity of the love I'm able to display first and foremost to God and then to other people. What areas of my mind am I not thinking like Jesus that get in the way of love? Mm-hmm, yeah. uh, uh, you know, what, what in my soul, what in my will? is getting in the way (laughs) what of me is just in the way yeah and then how is that showing up in my strength in my actions uh and the three questions of this series right all really focus back to my actions when's the last time i noticed the need so when am i what in my mind is getting in the way of me noticing a need Mm -hmm. oh when's the last time you're willing to be inconvenienced expend my strength yeah to love right Right. yeah out of love for god love other people and then cost me Right? That just gets everything. That gets in my yes. heart. Why? Because uh, what's tied to my wallet? Your heart. My heart. Your, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right? So when yeah. my heart's getting in the way of me being able to live a life of sacrifice the way Jesus did to actually love people, to yeah. expand his kingdom and to demonstrate his kingdom to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I know the first place, when, as soon as you started talking about love with all, and I finished your sentence with, all I've got, and what I meant by that internally, I was thinking, is I'm focusing on the doing. Mm. And then as you continued speaking, I realized that my being, with all of my being, with all of who I am, yes. actually precedes with, what's going to happen with respect to the doing. Yeah. Because if I'm willing to pay it all, I'll give everything I've got. Yeah. be my actions. Well, I would assert But that. my heart is what says, whatever I've got, it's yours. Heart, mind, and soul are being issues. Yeah. Strength then comes into the doing. Doing. Yeah. Yeah. See that? <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. What are we going to talk about today? Who knows? That's right. You never know. What are you thinking? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> or I'm thinking what I can't say right now. So got a smart alecky comment to say, yeah. So uh, you started talking about. Um, Sunday. Uh, by the way, it was a great message. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, good message. When I grew up, I want to preach like you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a theology of money or a theology of resources, which seems mm-hmm. strange to get into talking about uh, being a neighbor. But since you were, the whole series flows out of the story of the Good Samaritan. Yeah. You pointed out so well that uh, he offered his own oil, his own wine, mm-hmm. his own money, his yeah. own time. Uh, his own ability to the much that he had, right? He offered that all to the man to help him. Mm-hmm. So it was a demonstration. 
And um, I think that's where we get held up oftentimes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, What do I have? What do I not have? And so many times I think as as humans, it's just human nature. Our focus is on what we don't have. Well, I can't do that because I don't have. I've got these bills and I don't have money for these bills or I don't have... yeah, right. I don't have enough resources. Which Whenever maybe, is enough. Maybe like I'm even. mistaken, but pretty soon after this, Jesus tells his disciples to not worry about what they have, what they're going to eat, what they're going to drink, what they're going to wear. And he yeah. says, God will provide for that stuff. It, yeah, yeah. I it's, it's interesting. I actually, uh, I think that was one of the, I, I have the U version app. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And part of my daily routine is meditating on whatever the verse of the day is before I get into my Bible reading. Like I just, it's just an opportunity to meditate on a scripture that might not come up for me or whatever. And uh, just a couple days ago, I think that was, I'm actually pulling up what is my journal. uh, Cause I met it. I I was just making some thoughts about that verse just a couple days ago. If I can find it, I probably can't find it now. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to find it. So I don't even know why I'm trying, but uh, it did come up for me, and I just thought so interesting. Oh, it was uh, Monday. It was yesterday. Today's Tuesday. We're recording this. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient mm-hmm. for the day is its own trouble. And then he goes on, and he's like, "Yeah, uh, all your 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 clothing, your your shelter, yeah. your food. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Your mm-hmm. father is going to take care of all of that." We just talked about before we came on the podcast, like. The poorest people in America are richest or richer than the majority of people, people in third the world. world, right? People around the world, right? Like it's all perspective and context. Yeah. Jesus really tries to shape our perspective and our context around what we have yeah. and what we don't have. I think the issue, like I've realized it in my own heart is, oh my goodness, my heart wants for things that I don't have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And then because I don't have what I want to have, I view... <laughs> Yeah. What I don't have greater than what I view what I do have. Mm-hmm. The yeah. resources yeah. that God's provided. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm just yeah. saying I realize that about myself. Right. Right. So how can we shape our thinking in a way that's more aligned with kingdom values so that we can position ourselves to be the neighbor that God's called us to be? Yeah. Can you ask that one more time? Uh, no, because that was like on this. I didn't write that question <laughs> yeah. down, right? That came up. Like, how do we embrace a kingdom perspective of what we have in a new way yeah. so that we're positioned to be the neighbor that, that Jesus calls us to be? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a good question. I think, no, I think that's the question for us to yeah. live in, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. what, what would happen if believers, we lived in that question every day? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Change How could we advance the kingdom in a new way? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And with that, there's tension even within that question in that verse because it, Jesus isn't promoting laziness. Nope. Or inaction. Because he does say the lazy man doesn't eat among you, or he who doesn't, the man who doesn't work is worse than an unbeliever. So it's not promoting inaction by any stretch of the imagination, but really it's just promoting contentment. Mm hmm. Right? To be content in Him. Yeah, I think it's two things. I think it's promoting contentment, and it's promoting a new way to look at what is really need. Yeah. yeah. Like, oftentimes, the, the, the greatest need is not what our initial humanity views as need. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and people that feel they have need aren't necessarily the ones that are in need. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? Because yeah. in one time, we're like, hey, Jesus is like, hey, take care of the poor, take care of the sick. And then Scripture says, like, if a man doesn't work, he's worse than an infidel, right? If he right. won't work, don't worry about his needs, yeah. right? Yeah. All these other things, right? So there's multiple layers to this. Yeah. It's not cut and dry. Right. Yeah. It's not black and white. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I hear you. And, it, I mean, to me, you know, it was interesting yesterday just checking in with people in the foyer before service and in the time where we've had a couple of hurricanes lately yeah yeah. and just checking in with some people and there are people that you know if 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 we were millionaires we could give to the cleanup and restoration of fort myers and our southwest florida community these guys aren't millionaires but what they're doing is 
they're giving of their time and yeah. they're working 12 14 16 hours a day and not only are they giving their time and their talent to serve the community but there's also a sacrifice that they're choosing to make because that time to serve is time potentially away from their families right but but they're they're giving they're taking you know what mm-hmm. they have in their hand that they could offer and they're using that to serve mm-hmm. to help their neighbor to serve others and i really appreciated those conversations yesterday it was like heartfelt hey really i appreciate what you're doing yeah. to help yeah i think it's really interesting i think uh Kate, we talked about like a theology of resources and the reality is uh it took three things from the good samaritan it took his time yeah. probably he would have wanted to give elsewhere could have given elsewhere yeah uh, obviously it took his treasure uh there might be a case that it actually took his talent as well yeah right there was some kind of ability he had that he invested some strength and and i think uh if we just view resources in terms of financial then we miss the resources god has entrusted to us Mm -hmm. time talent Talent. ability treasure we could go beyond that into what we can access the supernatural resources we can access by grace through faith like the grace of god through our life Mm -hmm. so many different resources that can be employed or designed to be employed in the serving loving of others is not just one thing and it's not like i don't think tell me what y'all think i mean do we just pick and choose okay for this one i'm going to give my time for this i'm going to give my (laughs) talent some things are more convenient for us to give. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When are we willing to sacrifice the things that aren't so convenient? For some people, mm-hmm. it's easy to say, I'm just going to give. I'll give $1,000. I'll give yeah. $10,000, whatever. Yeah. I ain't going to give them my time. The sacrifice could come in their time. Right. Yeah. Uh, for others, the sacrifice comes in their money. Money. Yeah, right. And that's good. It's not yeah. one or the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In, in a way, it can be tied, closely tied. Mm-hmm. I, I, I definitely see that. And for these guys, I mean, uh, I, I think maybe sometimes when you do emergency services type work like policing, the, the sacrifice comes with time. And then there's being willing to make that sacrifice and acknowledge the, the sacrifice and the time away mm-hmm. from family, from friends, and mm-hmm. so on. But we're, it's because we've got a heart to give and serve. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, this was kind of as me and Alvin were um, preparing the series, preparing the series. You kind of wrote this down, didn't end up in the message, but uh, Acts 3, 6, which is then Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have. But what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get up and walk. Right. It's the man who's begging at the gate, asking for gold. Peter says, I don't have it, but here's what I do have. And so I'll read what Alvin wrote down. He said, you may not be able to solve all the world's problems. You may not have what others have to give, but you cannot pretend our God who gives all good gifts has given you nothing. Oh, right. so yeah, that's worth saying one more you time. Do have. Yeah. You may not be able to solve all the world's problems. You may not have what others have to give, but you cannot pretend our God who gives all good gifts has given you nothing. Whew. Which, in a sense, like noticing the need or even being willing to be inconvenient to meet the need um, Sometimes comparison can get in the way of us meeting that need because we see what other people have and compare it to it. And then we yeah. all of a sudden only see lack in our life. Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh, I don't, I don't have it to give. And it's like, no, no, no. Like God's given you something, mm-hmm. right? And, and that, that what he's given you actually yeah. matters. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so even counts. if we can say, oh, yeah, I know God's given me things. But then to think it actually matters and yeah. can make a difference. Yeah, right. Like the, what the enemy wants to do is think, oh, yeah, you don't matter. Yeah, live in the shame conversation. Yep. Right. Yeah. Right? Like, oh yeah, it's not. I'm not enough. I'll never be enough. No, actually, maybe in yourself you're not, but you're in Christ, and He's in you, and your Father is the giver of every good and perfect gift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It all comes down from Him. It's actually significant, which makes you significant, and you can do something and make a significant difference yeah. in somebody's life. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And and for and for uh, Peter and John at the gate. What they do, they look past what this guy thought was his need, yeah. which he did have a need, and he had a need because he wasn't able to meet it itself. Right. Yeah. They went beyond that immediate need 
to minister to the need so now he can actually care and provide for himself. Yeah. Right. Like he, uh, he, they went to a place where he'll, he potentially will never have that need again. Yeah. 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 Which is really what Jesus is really good at giving you what you actually need. For instance, like week two, we talked about the story of the friends who brought the man to Jesus and mm-hmm. they wanted his legs healed, which mm-hmm. Jesus did heal his leg, but he also forgave him of his sins. Oof. And yeah. gave him something much greater than yeah. legs, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And by healing, by forgiving his sins, he gave him life. Life. Right? Eternal life. Right? And there which we're back to... There back to Luke 25 and that where it, it, he's really the lawyer... Pharisee is what I'm thinking in my yeah. head, but the lawyer, the mm-hmm. way they present it, Luke presents it, yeah, is really asking about life, and mm-hmm. Jesus is saying, hey, here's what you do to live. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It, it, it's interesting, because the very nature of love is that it's giving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? For God so loved the world that he, he gave. gave, so he set the precedence, precedence yeah. Yeah. by giving and oftentimes we think like having life means having something. Yeah. But Jesus is saying, no, having life is actually in giving something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Giving love. Giving love. Which has yeah. an expression of giving of ourselves, uh-huh. of our time, our talent, our treasure, yeah. the supernatural things that he's placed in us. So interesting mm-hmm. conversation. Yeah. yeah. Interesting mm-hmm. conversation. Yeah. Um, you said something. I think it's worth uh, leaning into maybe just a little bit. Um, Jesus is saying, here was, here was what I wrote down that you said, in I think was your conclusion. Let's just say it was after the band came up, so I'll call it your conclusion. <laughs> I didn't look at your notes, but Jesus is saying that the kingdom of heaven is not a socialist society. Mm-hmm. So what? That, it's an interesting concept, and we're not here. This is not a political discussion. This is a kingdom discussion. Uh, and some people would say, "Well, I'm now." I'm gonna, some people would say that Acts <laughs> I'm two. I'm biting my tongue. You're biting your tongue. Why? Why are you biting your tongue? I was just gonna make a political joke. <laughs> he's gonna, no. he's gonna I was just gonna say socialist society. Free market capitalism. Capitalism is better, but it's fine. All right, go. On. Okay. Go on. Free market. <laughs> Um, uh, some people would say that Acts 2 and 4 is socialistic community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and you say the kingdom of heaven is not socialistic. So break that down a little bit. In eternity is really what I meant mm-hmm. about it. Um, so in eternity, so, so I'm gonna, rewards, I'm, people have greater rewards right. than others. Right. And Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Mm-hmm. On, on earth, earth as as it is in heaven yeah so what he's designed for eternity we actually partake of now eternal life now so that kingdom already and not yet yeah yeah right and that's the key too. already and already not and yet. not yet right. already and not yet i know your 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 comment was in terms of rewards because he's mm-hmm. going to reward each man according to yeah. his work uh and the kingdom Mm-hmm. Still operating now, in and through the church, right? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, that's yeah. the agent through which the kingdom is advanced in the earth. The church not being an organization, being an organism, being made yeah. up of you and me. Uh, so let's break that down a little bit, right? So, what happened in this early church that all, oftentimes we like hold up as this mark of something that mm-hmm. I'm not sure we should because it was still in. Yeah. So it says they had all things in common. Yeah. Nobody had need. Yeah. The all things in common is Jesus just became the absolute center of their life. Right. And so all of a sudden they completely rewired their whole life, their whole plans, their whole schedules around mm-hmm. Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so then their, their desires change, their needs change. And, Obviously, the Good Samaritan story is really about loving your enemies, but there's plenty of scripture about um, loving your neighbor being church, mm-hmm. like the church, mm-hmm. the people you're in community with, mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, in Acts, we see that expression. Not that the government is forcing it or mandating it, um, but really, they recognize the needs in their community and out of love 
began to share all things. It was the influence right. of Holy Spirit on their heart that prompted right. them. It wasn't something yeah. legislated. Yeah. And I would assert that it was also something apparently that they had agreed to, or else we wouldn't have the story of Ananias yeah. and Sapphira who came deceptively. Right. Right. The right. big key there is that, yeah, the deception. Mm-hmm. They had said, this is this everything. This is it. This is, this it. is everything. Right. Mm-hmm. And Peter even doubles down. He goes, this is all of it? Yeah. And then they're like, yeah. And then they drop dead, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's it was the lying Correct. And deception there. Yeah, that yeah. That was the key. So there's nothing. It was not legislated. Yeah, because Peter even says, um, you had all this already. Why would you agree to give it then? If That's you were right. just going to keep it. Yeah, it would have been fine anyways. for you to keep it. Yeah. The idea with them is they were trying to make themselves look good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And doing whatever you want, right? Which goes to motivation, right? Because here, here we can have yeah. you can actually give, right? With wrong motivation, right? Yeah. Right, and then all of a sudden you're not a good neighbor anymore because when it comes out of the wrong motivation, it's not coming from right. love, mm-hmm. which becomes the motivating factor. The love yeah. of God, yeah, because of God, His love for us, and the love for God, and then flowing through us yeah. to other people. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and with what went through my mind, which might not, but notice it produced death. Mm-hmm. Eggs. Oh, right. yeah. There we go again. Life and death. Yeah. That's a great notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because it didn't come out of the motivation of love. It, it produced the death. giving. Yeah, produced death. death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, matters of life and death. Isn't yeah. it interesting? We get back. We want to get back to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, what's our knowledge about love? Yeah. Our knowledge about loving our neighbor. What does this all mean? Yeah. We want to figure it out. <laughs> knowledge, right? Yeah. We always want to go back to eating from the tree of knowledge. Yep. of good and evil and the call of scripture the call, is always a call to life, life. let's go yeah. back and eat from the tree, tree of, of life. life what's producing life what's producing death producing death and then choose mm-hmm. life life yeah. yeah that's why i kind of felt the importance of just ending on communion because we can ask all these good questions about what it is to be a good neighbor we can even answer i mean ultimately jesus does answer that guy's question mm-hmm. and who is my neighbor mm-hmm. and he's like everyone Everybody. who needs a neighbor that's right. that's right if they need a neighbor be their neighbor mm-hmm. and there's something there's greater point to it too in that jesus brings life yeah yeah and literally apart from him it's vain practices they don't produce life mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. this converse you know conversation alone of who's my neighbor how am mm-hmm. i a good neighbor and does it cost me a Apart from Jesus' blood mm-hmm. and then him empowering us, I can never do it. Never do it. Yeah. Never do it. And the reality, too, is all of us and everyone can continue to ask ourselves, am I being a good neighbor? Am I loving God with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength? And my neighbor as myself, no. Right? I'm, the answer is no. Yeah. The answer the is day. no. Yeah. yeah. Thank God that I, for His mercy I can repent, and for His grace that continues to empower me as I walk through. And that doesn't that doesn't mean I lower the bar. Right. I still set that. Yeah. Right. As okay every day. So like, it, I, I mean, I mean, I'll tell you, like for the last year of my life, part of my regular personal liturgy, you could call it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Time with God is my declaration. I love the Lord my God with all my heart. Right. All my mind. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. All my soul. All my strength. Yeah. And I love my, like, that's part of my liturgy every day. And I've been taking time to meditate on, okay, what's going on in my heart that prevents that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lord, show me. I, I don't try to yeah. go on a search and destroy this mission because that doesn't produce life. Yeah. But open up my heart and let Holy Spirit speak to me about things yeah. in my heart that are getting in the way. Yeah. Things in my thinking, my thought life, my the meditation of my heart, my mind. Like, yeah. am, am, I, am I thinking on those things that whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are yeah. lovely? Mm-hmm. Like Philippians yeah. 4, right? Right. Uh, it, it, it is the mind in me that was also in Christ Jesus that thought it's not robbery yeah. to be equal with god but yet took on the form of a servant right yeah those kind of things that then produce something in terms of not just loving god but you can't meditate on that scripture without turning to saying okay if i love god it's going to show up in how i love others mm-hmm. yeah right yeah yeah no that's good and I've, i said this in a podcast like two weeks ago i think and i even used it in a uh, youth message but augustine has this prayer and he says uh, paraphrasing, Lord, help it not be a lie when I say that I love you today. Oh, so right? good. Which yeah. is 
to look to God even for our own ability to love Him, right? Yeah. In everything, I need. Him, I can't. Right? I can't love Him yeah. without help from Him. Yeah. Right. And so I oh, think. Well, I mean, I mean uh, John even said that we love because He first loved, loved us. us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. You know, I, I was thinking too about um, this whole idea of resources and being a neighbor. Where the New Testament church took this, where Paul even exhorted the New Testament church to take this, yeah. like he gave opportunity to support his ministry so that he could touch others. So one way, the Philippian church, the Macedonian church, he exhorted the Corinthian church, loved others was by supporting Paul's ministry so he could minister mm -hmm. effectively yeah. as an apostle, right? Yeah. And then at other times we see they had this prophetic word about helping the churches, right, that yeah. were in famine, and so the churches gave to help need, yeah, not right next door, a need of us. What is that? That's they were loving their neighbors Others. as yeah. themselves, right? They were giving of their resources to advance the kingdom, the kingdom through supporting Paul's ministry, through taking care of practical needs when the church was in a time of famine mm -hmm. in another part of the world. world. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's interesting yeah. that that's yeah. expanded even by the New Testament church in terms of loving your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great conversation today. We could probably keep talking about this. Yeah. You guys, like anything else you want to talk about or say? No. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of questions out there. Thanks for joining the podcast. We hope this helped you continue to just take this message and what God's saying to us at Life Church at this time, just to live it out. And we encourage you to do that. And until next time, this is the Mic'd Up Podcast. Yeah.